Easter is just around the corner. Maybe this year you don't want to make a traditional meal. We've got just the thing for you in today's Daily Dish. Chef Paul's making us braised lamb shanks. Sounds amazing. Here's what you need. Lamb shanks, some red wine, pickled, pearled onions and brine, celery and carrots, tomato paste, date syrup or maple syrup, rosemary, garlic and cornstarch. Okay, Paul, this meal looks like a million bucks, uh, but you say it's foolproof. Like, this is fairly easy. Easter is a time to celebrate and impress, but with less stress. This is a recipe that is big on flavor, thanks to a few ingredients, you know I me, mean? secret ingredients that do double duty, and it all happens, for the most part, in one pot here. So it's simple, but delicious. Oh, see, those are two words I really, really appreciate. Now, you're working with lamb. If you didn't want to do lamb, I don't know why you wouldn't want to, but if you didn't want to do lamb, what would, would, you, what would you suggest? So if lamb's not your thing, you could totally use beef shanks or veal shanks in the same preparation. These flavors will go perfectly with those. So easy, easy. So to start, I've already taken the time to brown off my lamb shanks in just a little bit of canola oil, very important step. And this is where it gets... It doesn't get simpler than this. You just add all your ingredients into the same pot. So I'm deglazing all those little brown bits with some dry red wine, a little bit of water, and just scraping the bottom. You want to loosen up those brown bits. Everybody knows that's where the flavor comes in. And pretty classic braising ingredients here, some diced carrot, diced nice and small, some diced celery, and our first secret ingredient. Now, normally I would add maybe diced onion or to make it really impressive, some pearl onions, but today I'm using some pickled or marinated pearl onions. And these do double duty because not only do you not have to peel pearl onions, they also bring acidity to the table. So I add a little bit of brine from the pearl onions in as well. Okay, pearl onions sound like a really good choice there. Uh, any advice on what we should look for when buying pickled pearl onions? Yes, so I would avoid the cocktail variety, the really small ones. They're very acidic. They're very crunchy. Um, look on antipasto bars in gourmet sections where you would find like roasted red peppers in jars and things like that, um, or on an olive bar, because they tend to be a little bit larger and um, the brine is just not as strong. If you can't find it, there's a substitution in the recipe for just using regular old pearl onions. So now just a few more ingredients, some garlic, six cloves, crushed, some salt and pepper, of course, and big flavor ingredients, tomato paste. Don't cheap out on your tomato paste. Buy the good stuff. It's not that much more expensive. It comes in a tube. It stays in the fridge. It lasts longer. And this ingredient, date syrup, or sometimes known as date molasses. This is just a concentrate of pressed date juice, and it's got big flavor and sweetness. So again, double duty. Okay, that sounds good. Now, if you can't find the date syrup, any alternatives you might suggest? Absolutely. You can go ahead and just use maple syrup. A dark maple syrup also will bring depth of flavor and sweetness. But if you've never cooked or tried date syrup before, go ahead and try it. It brings a lot to this recipe. Now, finally, a few rosemary sprigs just nestled right in there. And we are going to throw our lamb back in and just Nestle them in like this. You think they won't fit, and then they do. Just get them all in there, and that's basically the hard part of this recipe all done. So throw it in, push it down, and lid, lid goes on, and this goes into a 350-degree oven for about three hours. I would check it halfway through just to make sure that your liquid's still good, and what you end up with is this beautiful rich, dark, brazy finished product with this beautiful rich sauce. Now I just removed them, stirred in a little cornstarch mixed with water, let it cook for another 10 minutes and that's it. And I'm serving it on top of a simple, simple brown butter, sweet potato mash, three ingredients, which I've already made here, couldn't be simpler. And you just serve that right on top, just like this. And it's a showstopper, but it's so simple to make. Mm -hmm. Paul, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Looks delicious. That recipe is, of course, on our website. That's City Line.